Hello friends, today I am going to give you some idea about the topic screening and strain improvement which is a very important task in the industrial microbiology. Now in this topic we are going to discuss the following points. Number one is screening and number two is strain improvement. Under the topic screening there are four sub points namely need of screening, choice of microbe, strategies for screening and types of screening. And under the point strain improvement there are again two sub points which are strain improvement without the help of foreign DNA and strain improvement with the help of foreign DNA. Next we move on to the term screening. Microbes will have the last word. This sentence is quoted by the famous microbiologist Louis Pasteur. Industrial microbiology is associated with the commercial exploitation of microbes for the well-being of mankind and these microbes and their products are directly or indirectly associated with the economy, environment, social parameters of the society. Now what is the meaning of the term screening? It actually means the use of highly selective procedures for the isolation and detection of the microbes which are of interest among a large population of microbes. Now what screening actually does? It discards many valueless microbes and at the same time selects the microbes which are of interest from a very large population. And one should always keep in mind that screening should never be considered as a routine method and there are no universal methods for screening of microbes. That is, it will depend upon the type of the microbes one is interested in. Next, screening is done to achieve the following objectives. That is, to obtain chemotherapeutically useful products such as antibiotics, or to obtain enzyme inhibitors and pharmacologically active substances or for having a better starter culture for food industry or degradation of chemically hazardous substances which ultimately leads to environmental cleaning. Now there are certain criteria for the choice of microorganisms that is the microbe should be genetically stable, the product recovery from the culture should be easy, the strain should be high yielding, it should have a stable biochemical characteristic, it should not produce undesirable substances or it should be easily cultivated on a large scale basis. And there are certain strategies for screening of microbes. Number one is the isolation of microbes from natural sources, then comes the identification of the desired microbes then screening of the desired microbes, then come inoculum preparations, strain improvement and finally fermentation. Screening is of two types, primary screening and secondary screening. Primary screening is a process of isolation and detection of the microbe from any natural source having the desired trait. And secondary screening is for the sorting of the microbe which has been obtained through primary screening having a real value for industrial microbiology. Screening can be done in two ways. Number one by shotgun approach or by objective approach. Shotgun approach deals with searching a micro from any natural source and then screening it for the desired trait. And in objective approach microbes are isolated from a specific site where the desired trait is likely to occur. So objective approach is more appropriate and specific than shotgun approach. Next we come to the sources from where microbes can be isolated. Microbes can be isolated from any natural entities that is it can be soil or any water body. It can be tree leaves or tree trunk. It can be a marine environment or a volcanic vent or it can be other extreme environments such as a hydrothermal vent present at the seabed or a sulphur spring. 
Next we come to the enrichment of microbes. After isolation of microbes, enrichment should be done. And enrichment is a process of adding a required substance into the medium which favors the growth of a specific type of microbe. Enrichment actually increases the quantity of the desired microbe. There are various types of enrichment media available which favors various types of organisms. And enrichment can be done with the addition of the required substrate utilized by the microbe or it can be done with the addition of the toxic analogs used by the microbes or by testing microbial metabolites for bioactive activity. Now, after isolation, identification of microbe is required. Identification of important microbes can be done by the following characteristic. Number one, by observing the morphology of the microbe. Number two, is by the use of certain media known as the selective or diagnostic media. Number three is by observing the culture characteristic of the microbe. Number four is by performing additional biochemical test. Number five is by observing the profile of the microbe. And number six, there are other methods known as the rapid identification methods. Now, we come to morphology. One can identify a microbe by observing its morphology which deals with the structure, form, shape, length, etc. of a microbe. That is whether the microbe ha is have flagella forming a capsule or forming a spore etc. One can also identify a microbe by cultivating it on a selective or a diagnostic media. A selective media favors the growth of a particular type of microbe. For example, mannitol salt agar favors the growth of the bacteria known as Staphylococcus aureus. Next, one can also identify a microbe by observing its culture characteristic, that is, the shape, margin, elevation, color, etc. of the colony formed by the microbe on a media. There are certain biochemical tests present for identification purpose. For example, the carbohydrate fermentation test or invic test, etc. These tests are extensively used for the identification purpose of microbes. Next, one can also identify a microbe by observing its profile, which can be done by various methods and staining is one of them. Next, there are certain methods known as rapid identification methods by which a microbe can be identified which include electron microscopy. This is the picture of Esaurus under scanning electron microscope. After isolation and identification, one should require the preservation of the culture for future use. And Conventional microbiology always depend on the availability of the pure culture of microbes. There are certain methods for preservation of the culture of the required microbe, among which periodic transfer is the first technique used often by microbiologists. But in this process, the culture is prone to contamination and genetic alteration. Apart from periodic transfer, refrigeration is another way to store a culture for short term storage. A culture can also be stored in low temperatures, that is at minus 25 degree. In ultra low temperatures, that is at minus 80 degree Celsius and in liquid nitrogen, which is at minus 196 degree Celsius and also known as cryopreservation. A culture can also be stored under a layer of mineral oil for years. Apart from this, lyophilization is another process by which bacterial cultures and other microbial cultures can be preserved. In this process, the microbe is dried without any alteration to the cell and it becomes a powdered solid. 
fungal spores can be dried on substratums such as papers and can be kept for years. And cells of microbes can also be immobilized in beads and can be stored for future use. Next we move on to the second point which is strain improvement. Before moving into the details, we should know about what is a strain. A strain is a subgroup of a species with one or more characteristics that distinguish it from other subgroups of the same species. Each strain is identified by a name, number or letter. For example, E. coli strain K12 or E. coli strain O121. Now, the term Strain improvement means the science and technology of manipulating and improving microbial strains in order to enhance the metabolic capacities. These are the objectives of strain improvement, that is to obtain a high yield of the target product, a rapid growth and shorter fermentation time of the microbe, no production of undesirable substances, the microbe should be non-toxic to humans. The ability of the microbe to use cheaper substrates and genetic stability of the microbe and its superiority. Now the question may arise that how strain improvement is done. It is actually done by two methods. Number one is mutagenesis in which no foreign DNA is involved. And number two is recombination in which foreign DNA is involved. Now, before going to the details, the term mutation should be clear to us. Mutation actually is a process by which the sequence of base pairs in a DNA molecule is altered. And mutation can occur due to the presence of several factors or agents known as mutagens. For example, ultraviolet radiation, pollutants and chemicals or tar from tobacco can act as a mutagen and can cause a mutation in the DNA. Mutation can also occur during replication, transcription or translation process inside a cell. Now, mutation is of two types, spontaneous and induced. When mutation occurs at a spontaneous rate of 10 to the power minus 10 and 10 to the power minus 15 per generation in a cell, it is known as spontaneous mutation. And when mutation is induced due to the presence of certain factors or agents known as mutagen, the mutation is known as induced mutation. Several factors can act as mutagens. For example, Ionizing radiations, for example, X-rays and gamma rays can act as mutagen. Non-ionizing radiation such as ultraviolet radiation can also act as a mutagen. There are certain chemicals, for example, mustard gas, benzene, ethidium bromide, nitrozoguanidine, etc., which can also act as mutagen and cause mutation in a DNA. Now there are two terms which should be clear to us to study mutation and mutagenesis. Number one is genotype which is the genetic makeup of an organism and number two is phenotype and phenotype is the physical appearance of an organism which is produced due to the genotype and its interaction with the environment. And from these two picture, the idea will be more clear. In the first picture, it shows that the flower at the extreme end has the genotype of capital AA and the flowers at the extreme right hand side has the genotype of small AA. Two capital letters means two dominant genes responsible for the trait and Two small letters means two recessive genes responsible for the trait. And the pink flowers have one recessive gene that is a small a and 
one dominant gene that is a capital A. And in the next picture which is a seed of P, the round seed has the genotype of capital SS and the wrinkle seed has a genotype of small SS means it is a recessive trait. Whereas the hybrid has a genotype of capital S and small s means it has both the recessive and the dominant gene. From this picture it is clear that genotype always indicates the phenotype but phenotype always not indicate the genotype. This is all about the today's episode and in the next episode we will be discussing about the strain improvement and how strain improvement is done that is the process of mutagenesis and the process of recombination by which strain improvement is done. Thank you.